because they just dominate uh, the landscape and the conversation. And, you know, the big story reported yesterday that Zach Wilson was hesitant to uh, take the starting job, uh, then was uh, talked into it, so to speak. And the, the person at the forefront of the story is our former colleague now with The Athletic, uh, Diana Rossini, and she's nice enough to join us now. Diana, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How you doing? Hey, guys. How's everyone doing? It's been a while since yeah. I talked to you guys. Yeah, a, a lot has gone on. But, uh, you know, I, I used to be a reporter, Diana. And when I had a story cold and then somebody came out and said it wasn't true, it just infuriated me. So Aaron Rodgers kind of saying that, you know, um, he never spoke to Zach or anything like that. What, what's what's your whole take on, on the Jets' response to what, what you reported yesterday? Yeah, I think the Jets have to go out there and deny it the way Robert Sala did yesterday, the way Aaron Rodgers did today. Although they didn't actually really deny this, the accuracy of the story. It was just more uh, about their issue with the leaks that are coming out and that information that's getting out of the building. You guys have been playing Rodgers' interview with the Pat McAfee show. And when you really listen to what he's talking about, he he's mad at the Jets right now that something like this that can make a player look bad would even be given to reporters um and that reflects the state of the team and i think right now everyone's trying their best to try to figure out you know what was it a player was it a coach was it a trainer was it somebody that works in security i can just tell you that it was multiple people um that are very aware because the entire building has been aware of this for over a week now that Zach Wilson has had reluctance to wanting to go back in there. He's expressed it openly uh, to people. And from his side of it, I think you guys have, I'm sure, discussed it about how, you know, maybe he has a right to stand up for himself because of the fear of being injured. He knows he's not going to be with the New York Jets once he was benched. Once he was benched, it was over for Zach Wilson in New York. And I understand from his perspective of why he was perhaps contemplating going back in there but then of course you have that other side so uh you know the Jets wanted Aaron Rodgers to talk to him coach him up a little bit about why you need to um you know make the right decision mm -hmm. here for the team because they need him they in their opinion Zach Wilson is the best quarterback in that building at this moment and they want to put him back in there now, Diana that's the one thing he did refute though he says he never spoke to Zach or that he was ever told to speak to Zach so I guess that's the one thing that he did say that that you were misleading at so yeah that's okay okay he doesn't want to he doesn't want to share that he has that much influence and power then it also confirms my report but he was told to speak with him last wednesday and he spoke with him yesterday um about changing his mind and i was actually even told that it didn't even work uh initially that zach said thanks but no thanks um this is what i'm going to do moving forward now uh, someone from Zach's side of this did reach out that if he was going to be named a starting quarterback, he's going to get out there and play. And he's now changed his, his mind on this and will be doing it. So, um, look, Michael, you, you just mentioned that you've done this before. It's, it's frustrating because I don't think people can see through it. That's where it's frustrating. Right. But the Jets know I know, Zach Wilson knows I know, and Aaron Rodgers once again has gone on television to refute a report that's accurate and he knows it and he just won't admit it so i know he wants people to put their name on it but he can also oh. just acknowledge that yeah they could have easily come out here and just said yeah he was contemplating it how could he not and um, what used to call me diana is that when i had a story cold that somebody leaked to me and then the person that leaked it to me said well that's not true i mean that happens too <laughs> yeah yeah the jets were well aware i was reporting this. right and, the jets are and diana very, very well aware. So, Diana, here, here's the part that I've been sort of miffed by. Like, I sort of feel like if if the angle Zach Wilson was taking was, I'm tired of playing games with you guys. You bring me in. You take me out. It's it's not fair. It's not reasonable. Do what you want. I'm moving on. I feel like that sort of plays one way. But then what we heard about, like, he's scared of getting hurt plays another much worse way. W was it a mix of both things, or was it really just he's scared of getting hurt from what you know yeah it's both it's both it's it's how he's been treated by the Jets what he knows to be his future with the organization mixed with the risk that he would have to take going back in there for a team 
that no longer wanted him, no longer wants him, and made that pretty clear. And then to have to go out there behind an offensive line that that isn't great, and they're aware of that. And so the reason why this story, I think, is so sensitive at this point, yes, there's a factor of, of what Aaron brought up, which is Zach's character, but really, not, this isn't about Zach Wilson. This is about the New York Jets. This is about what's happening in this building at this moment, the decisions they made at the quarterback position, the lack of decisions, so everyone can get mad about the reporting and the sourcing and all this stuff. This isn't any person in the media's fault. These decisions were not made by us. The Athletic didn't pick this. Uh, they chose this. They did this. Um, so I think for Zach Wilson, he's unfortunately uh, uh, just a, a small piece of really just a gigantic uh, dysfunctional organization at this moment. So let me let me go further then beyond this story. So the, you're talking about how dysfunctional it seems, and from the outside looking in, and you're you're more in than we are. It does look dysfunctional. Do you believe that if they end up four and thirteen, that they're going to be changes, or are they going to run it back and just gamble on Aaron Rodgers? The sense I get is that as long as Aaron wants the people in place to be where they're at, the coordinators, the head coach, the GM, if he wants that, ownership will will then agree to that. Aaron Rodgers has all the power in the New York Jets organization. Amazing. If he wants it, they'll do it. Now, is your there's, sense, there's, Diana... There's, there's no, like... Go ahead. Uh, is, is, is your sense that this power that Rodgers has is, is being forced or manipulated by Rodgers or just the power just comes from the fact that he just gives them the best chance to win and they have no other choice? No, I don't think he walks around with a crown on his head like he's the king mm -hmm. of New York. I think he's respected because of the caliber of player he is and his understanding of what a culture should be, a winning culture, what it should look like compared to what it's been, you know, stories that I have been told about how Aaron Rodgers has affected this Jets organization in a positive way is overwhelming. I've never covered a player that has changed the way people operate on a daily basis by him just being in a room. And that's credit to what he can do. And this is why he gets all the respect and why everyone is making so many excuses for some of the things he says and some of the shots he takes because he's that good of a football player and he has this uh magnetic way to be to to lead and they need him for that reason and as long as aaron in new york they're winning in their minds because of this effect and this entire year was built around him and now, obviously, with him being gone since week one, you see what happens when an entire organization built something around just one person. It completely falls apart. So the hope is that he gets healthy, he gets ready to go, he comes back next year, and everything that we saw this past season in terms of, of the staff and the way it looks will be in place for next year, and they'll just run this back. Now, one thing that he said today to McAfee that kind of struck me as, as a former reporter you know, it's wrong to assassinate Zach Wilson's character um, because of a source. I find that laughable. I mean, I blame the source. I, I did agree with Rodgers on that. You know, your source and put your name to it if you really want to assassinate his character. But it's not up to you to protect Zach Wilson's character. That stuff was talked to you, uh, told to you by somebody. So do you, when you, you hear him say stuff like that, well, what's your reaction, Diana? Yeah, like I, I, I work for The Athletic, which is owned by the... I can't just take the word or just a text message or one quick phone call right. or from just one person close to Zach Wilson or one person close to the Jets. It doesn't work like that. And I think sometimes people forget because there is so much bad journalism out there right now that it's hard to trust. Um, but I can tell you I've been working at The Athletic for three months, and it takes a lot to get a story um, published in terms of the screening of it and, and the people that have to be part of it. And so, and it can't be low level people. It has to be people that are in the situation, that are close to the situation. It has to be multiple. And, and that's why I stand by my reporting because as you know, when you have all the information and all the main players are aware of it, um, all I can do is just report what I know. And that's what I've done. And look, the Jets have to do what they have to do for the, to clean this up because it looks bad right now as they're trying to just get through this regular season so they can just get to next year. 
Have you been able to glean anything about what the hell has really happened at quarterback beyond Rodgers? Because, Diana, we talk to Coach Sala every week and kind of try to push what exactly is happening. Why are we not able to get, like, any sort of representative offense uh, on this team? What do you understand about what's happened at the quarterback position throughout the year? They're just struggling in general with having someone step into the role and play at a high level. Um, why didn't they go get Joe Flacco? I don't know. Right. Never even reached, they never even reached out to him. Um, there were a lot of different reasons for why they didn't go to certain players. And I, I don't know what they all are. Uh, I don't know who had all the say in all of this, but it made this mess. You know, going back to before the trade deadline, why aren't the Jets trading? Well, it's from, from the business side of it um, at the time. Hey, you know, maybe they just don't want to give up all of, they don't want to give up anything knowing Aaron's coming back. They don't want to have to pay another guy. They, and, and, and I was buying it because it was like, okay, well, you, you guys know your, your book's better than I do. This would make sense. But we saw what happened after that because there is a need at the quarterback spot. And, and Zach Wilson wasn't the answer then. He's not the answer now. He's not going to be the answer this weekend if they name him the starter. It's been known. And they really, in, in my opinion, I don't know this. This is just my opinion. I think the second Aaron Rodgers went down, they all just ran to the corner and said, let's just hope we can get through this year. Let's just get through the year because we can, the expectations now um, are impossible to live up to because we don't have one of the greatest uh, players to ever play the game on the field. Well, how bad would that be considering look at the league, look at the teams that have been able to win with backup quarterbacks, Diana, look at the teams right. that have been able to function offensively with awful quarterbacks at times, and they've got one of, if not the best defenses in football, so to run and hide and just get through the year, they had re they had ways to salvage this. We saw it last night. Joe, we saw it at the Bengals. Joe Burrow is not out there, and the, and the Bengals are winning. Um, I covered the, the, you know, the, the Cleveland Browns. I cover all the teams, but I talked to the Browns a lot. Four different quarterbacks. They've got. They've been able to put together, and and they have a great defense too, just like the New York Jets. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, the culture there is not. Oh, we don't have a quarterback. The culture is. We got to just keep winning. We got to win. Let's just keep winning. And and you know, all around the league, you're seeing it, and it's hard. It is hard. You you feel for these guys. I, I think we all feel for the Jets situation, knowing how excited they were and what they were, what they did to get Aaron Rodgers in the building. So to see that the way this has looked, and Aaron said it on the Pat McAfee show, this has been a horrible year, and and you you felt it when he said it, because this is not what they were hoping for, and and the fact that this team has looked as bad as it has after Aaron Rodgers went down, um, you know, I think that's the reason why we're seeing so much of, uh, I guess, the ugliness and the blemishes really come out. We appreciate you coming on. I know you got to pick up the kids. Uh, love talking to you. How do you know that? Uh, because oh. I know these things, you know. I'm a, I got a source. Peter can't yes, keep his mouth shut. You know, reading my text messages on the yeah, air. Yeah, you know, you it know sounds what? like another talk show host in town. Yeah, that, that happens in New York. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you for coming on. Yes, I love you. <laughs> of course. And happy, uh, happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays. So God, that's Diana Rossi. One thing, I, I think she got a call. What she, what she said, the Athletic is owned by the New York Times. Right. That guy so, that got lost. Right. So the New York Times, I, I think you have to have like two or three well-placed sources. You have to tell the editors exactly who the mm -hmm. source is before See? it can run. So it's not like you could get, you know, Bernie the janitor told you that See? this is what ha it has to be somebody that's deemed a uh, high-ranking person mm -hmm. in order to run with it. So I think the Jets are just trying to put a spin on this, guys. Yeah, and you know what? Rodgers is smart in the sense that there is so much bad media out there, as Diana said, that it's easy to kind of poke holes in any story, not realizing how vetted some of these stories are by professional organizations like The Athletic. So you have so many blogs and even radio stations and newspapers that don't vet these stories, and, and bad things end up happening through that. And there's enough of that there that you can get the general public to not believe anything that is said by the media. We've seen this in politics as well. But you know, to know that when, when she gave that story, and it's true about how hard they work to, to verify everything, and for her to say, this is not one person telling her this. 
There's multiple people. This is all over the room. Michael, she spoke with conviction. That's why she, with confidence, was able to, to tell that story. This isn't some disgruntled employee whispering something in her ear. This is something she found out from multiple sources. She did the work. Aaron should really apologize to her because, the, because unfortunately, Aaron's words have power. And, he, and he's wrong to try to bring her down on a story that she did the work on. And then also denying that he spoke to him. And then Diana said, I know for a fact that he did. Yeah. So, well, again, like you can say what you want. Because the way it is now, we have been drilled in this country to think of alternative facts, fake news, and all that. So whenever you get zapped or you get caught, just say, you know, it was AI. It wasn't me. Well, I wasn't there. I mean, and, and it's hard for people to believe. They don't know who to believe. And the well, New York Times does get things wrong every now and then. But like Diana said, Aaron Rodgers, of course, is going to deny that he spoke to Zach because that would be confirming the story. Right. So he had no choice but to deny that. But you to know, go just from hearing Diana, he, Zach doesn't look good. I don't want to play. Oh, I, I listen. You gave once I heard, he was being open. Once I saw her name on it, honestly, I'm not just saying this as a former colleague, but I, I know her work. I know her. She's really good at what she does. I believe the story. I believe it even more after hearing her. But but the, she added that little wrinkle to it that, like, this was just straight-up common knowledge. He wasn't – that's why she's so confident. He wasn't being tight-lipped about it. He was telling people it's how he felt. All right, so let's spin this back All to right, Sala so from yesterday. Uh, we, uh, real quick, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, you know better than me, Michael, as far as the time. I, I won't say anything. Now. Okay, because we have our, our –